Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and having a flare-free day. If you're new here, my name is Em and I'm an endometriosis advocate and everything on this channel is related to living life with a chronic illness. I am so happy that you are here and that you found this channel. And uh, if you're just diagnosed or newly diagnosed, know that you're not alone. I am with you 100% of the way. I've lived with endometriosis more than 14 years of my life. So I can only imagine the emotions and feelings that you're having during this moment uh, with whatever chronic illness that you're dealing with. In today's video, I thought that we would talk about a taboo topic <laughs> that is on top of endometriosis, and that is bowel endometriosis. So if that interests you, then please keep on watching. So obviously with bowel endometriosis, it's not talked about as often as we would like. It's a taboo topic because a lot of individuals, including myself, we're nervous to say to friends and family, oh, how are your bowel movements? Or do you have pain when you go to the bathroom? Or do you bleed sometimes? These are conversations that are very, in my mind, I was embarrassed to bring up. I didn't know how to bring it up. I didn't know if things were normal or not. And obviously, if you're feeling pain or discomfort or bleeding while doing a bowel movement or urinating, definitely talk to your medical provider. But it is a definite warning sign of endometriosis that is not talked about as often as other common endo symptoms like painful periods, infertility, leg pain, all of the above. Endometriosis on the bowels is common. And as we know, endometriosis is a full body disease. So yes, it can be found around your bowels and can cause additional issues, complications, and pains that we may disassociate with something else. We may associate it with irritable bowel syndrome, or we may associate it with gastrointestinal issues, which may be the case. And again, talk to your doctor if anything changes. But oftentimes individuals with endo are dismissed for bowel endometriosis and have a long lineup of waiting for appropriate treatment because they misdiagnose it as something other than bowel endometriosis. Bowel endometriosis happens when endometriosis tissues grow deeper within the pelvic cavity of the body. This causes endometriosis to form adhesions, lesions, and nodules on or around the bowels. The endometriosis lesions and adhesions are around your bowels. It is unfortunately unlikely that it will not be impacting other parts of that region. So it could be impacting your bladder, your colon, your rectum, other reproductive organs in that tightly packed cavity, such as the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. Bowel endometriosis is also considered to be known as deeply infiltrating endometriosis, which is the worst like acronym that you could probably have, but DIE is the proper acronym for deeply infiltrating pelvic endometriosis, which does impact the bowels. When tissue grows on or around the bowels, those adhesions can act like glue and can tether bits of the intestine to parts of itself or other organs in that pelvic cavity. So it can be extremely painful when you have a bowel movement and you urinate because that endometriosis tissue and adhesion or lesions are causing additional pain and discomfort because things might be more crammed or connected to each other or the lesions inflamed and maybe causing additional pain or discomfort during a bowel movement. When it comes to bowel endometriosis, those living with endo itself, approximately five to 12% experience bowel endometriosis signs and symptoms. How do I know if I have bowel endometriosis? Here are some warning signs that you can look out for. The first is extreme amounts of bloating. So that's known as endo belly, and it's really painful bloating. Even if you've just woken up, if you've just had one cracker or one piece of food and it just bloats out and it's super painful, that can be a sign of bowel endometriosis. Abdominal cramping and pain, constipation, diarrhea, painful bowel movements. So if you're experiencing pain, discomfort, a sharp shooting, stabbing sensation while doing a bowel movement, that is definitely a warning sign of bowel endo. Nausea or vomiting, and this can be associated during a bowel movement or following a bowel movement. Some patients also experience rectal bleeding. Now. Obviously, if you experience any of these warning signs, definitely talk to your doctor because you should not be bleeding while having a bowel movement generally, uh, but it can be a warning sign of endo that needs to be investigated. Unfortunately, these signs and symptoms of bowel endometriosis mimic other gastrointestinal diseases or disorders, such as irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, inflammatory bowel disease, or even appendicitis. So when you go into your doctor and say, hey, I am bleeding from the rectum, they might say, okay, this is something we need to investigate. It could be IBS, 
and that's a huge possibility. But when you have other symptoms of endometriosis, such as painful periods, ovulation pain, back pain, leg pain, all these other warning signs during or leading up to your menstrual cycle, that can help your doctor narrow down that it could potentially be bowel endometriosis. I say this because oftentimes people wait years for proper treatment for bowel endo or pain management options because they're trying to address a different disorder or symptom that they think is associated with something completely different. How is bowel endometriosis diagnosed and treated? So, <laughs> Like endometriosis generally, it can take a very long time to get a proper diagnosis and treatment options in place. On average, for endometriosis solely to be diagnosed without the bowel portion involved, it can take seven to 11 years. It took me approximately 12 years going from doctor to doctor to get an answer to the pain I was experiencing. When it comes to bowel endometriosis, on average, seven to eight years to get a proper diagnosis from individuals experiencing that pain. This was partially, again, because individuals and healthcare providers were looking into other diseases and disorders that could be related to gastrointestinal problems. So to diagnose bowel endo, your doctor might refer to certain things and procedures to get the ball rolling on diagnosing it properly. The first thing that your doctor might do to diagnose bowel endo is a physical examination. What this could entail is they might massage or press on your abdominals to just see if there's any pain or tenderness that you're experiencing. They might do a physical examination of your internal and external pelvic cavity as well as your rectum just to see if there are any growths or discomfort that you're experiencing with that physical examination. So one of the options could also include an ultrasound. When it comes to ultrasounds, your doctor will put in a transducer and ultrasounds through the transducer will create high frequency waves to create an image for the doctor to see. What they're looking for is basically tissues, adhesions, lesions, or growths that they can see via imaging. It can show the size of endometriomas and where it's located. Another test they might look at are MRIs. This test uses powerful magnets and radio waves to see if bowel endometriosis is present. A colonoscopy might also be included in that diagnosis procedure. This test uses a flexible scope to go investigate your intestines. A colonoscopy doesn't necessarily diagnose bowel endometriosis, but it does rule out other things like colon cancer, which can cause similar symptoms. And finally, they might do a laparoscopy, which is a keyhole surgery where your doctor will go in and physically see if there are endometriosis lesions, adhesions, and tissues visible to the naked eye. They might remove a piece of tissue during that procedure just to send it out for biopsy to confirm if it is actually endometriosis. Lots of things that your doctor can do to kind of diagnose bowel endometriosis. Again, going to your doctor with, here are my signs and symptoms that I'm having can really help narrow down if it does associate with bowel endo. I highly recommend bringing a journal with you to say, doctor, listen, I'm bleeding through the rectum. I have really painful bowel movements. I also suffer with extremely painful periods and ovulation pain, leg pain, all the above. And they can kind of say, oh, this might sound like endometriosis. It does make sense though for doctors to rule out other important things. So you do wanna be checked out for colon cancer. You do wanna be checked out for other things that might be causing that discomfort or inflammation. So definitely go with the procedures that your doctor is recommending. But again, voice your concerns and state that if you're not comfortable with a certain procedure or you want more information, definitely get more resources and support along the way. So how is bowel endometriosis treated? Rectal shaving. This includes your surgeon going in and removing parts of the endometriosis on top of the bowel without taking any part of the intestines. It can be done for a smaller area of endometriosis that's present on the bowels. Unfortunately, endometriosis is more likely to come back after this type of surgery. So just be forewarned that it might be a procedure that might be having to be recurred over time. Another option is disc resections. So with this type of surgery, your surgeon will go in and remove a section of the intestine that is really impacted by that endometriosis. So they'll remove a disc and then they'll resection that keyhole closed from the intestine so that the intestine is still intact, but that one portion is removed. You want to make sure that your surgeon is an endometriosis specialist because you want to make sure that they understand what endometriosis lesions, adhesions, and nodules look like. Make sure you're seeing an endometriosis specialist for your surgeries. Obviously with any type of surgery that you're having, it's important to go through the pros and cons and if you are feeling comfortable about that decision. 
please do not let anyone pressure you to take on a procedure or a treatment option that doesn't line up with what you're comfortable with. It is your body. So if you want to make sure that you're doing certain things or you want to follow a certain path, make sure that you feel comfortable with that decision. So when it comes to surgery, there are a lot of complications that can arise. There are things that you have to look out for. Surgery is a major decision. So please make sure that you take the time to really think about what you want to do. There might be other options such as medication or natural pain relief options that you can do to really help soothe that bowel endometriosis pain and discomfort. And you should definitely talk to your doctor about those options that are available within your region. So obviously bowel endometriosis is extremely complicated. It can come with a lot of crazy symptoms and warning signs and it can come with major decisions for treatment options. Um, obviously, there are some treatment options that may not reduce the amount of pain that you experience. They may cause additional complications based on that surgery of scar tissue building up or endometriosis returning. Um, so definitely think about these options and talk to your doctor about other options that could you could walk or take. Um, if you're dealing with these signs and symptoms, know that you're not alone. Again, five to 12% live with bowel endometriosis. So you are not alone whatsoever uh, within that endo community. And um, if you have any questions or you have gone through a surgery or procedure to treat your bowel endo, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. And any natural pain methods that you've walked would be really helpful for others in their journey. So do you use a hot water bottle to ease that pelvic pain? Um, do you do certain things prior to a bowel movement to get yourself mentally prepared for a potential painful experience? Little things like that that can help the community are always welcome here. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to comment down below or DM me on Instagram. With that, I will talk to you on the next one.